week we talked about what, what is it that you have to have to, to use the takeout double? Amen. Amen. No more than eight points. No, no more than eight points? Where did you get that, Joyce? No less than eight points. No. no.
So don't cheat and use a takeout double when you don't have the right shape. Because as sure as I'm standing here, if you have two cards in a suit, I promise you that's the, that's the suit your partner's going to be in. That's just the way it is. <laughs> that's, at least it's the way it is in my heart. So, now then, let's talk about how Responder acts. With zero to eight points, what does Responder bid? Your he bids his suit at the cheapest level. Does he bid his best suit or his longest suit? Yes, his longest suit. Yes. His best suit may only be four cards, but if he has a five card suit, he knows partner has at least three of them, right? So he needs to bid the longest one in general, as a general rule. With nine to 11 points, what does he do? No. Well, Who said jump? Jump one. Jumping, jump, jump, at least, jump his level. Jump one level. On his suit. Instead of, if it goes a, du a diamond, double, pass. If you would bid one heart with zero to eight points, with nine to eleven points, you will bid two hearts. That says to partner, hey, I've got better than, than just jump over here. I actually have a pretty good hand. And is it possible that partner could have a full opener? You bet. Parker could have 14 or 15 points, couldn't he? Maybe he doesn't have a stop in the opponent's suit because he's so short in it, so he can't all follow no trunk. So it's important for him to know that kind of information. Now, with a stopper or stoppers in the opponent's suit, you bid one no trunk with how many points? Eight to 11, yes. Somebody's referring to her notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two no trump with what?
everybody passes, and that's no good either. So it's really important that you bid your hand and communicate with your, with your partner. Don't bid a ten-point hand the same way you do a four-point hand. There's lots of difference, right? Is it possible for you and your partner to have a game after an opponent has opened and your partner uses a takeout double? You bet it is. You bet it is. So let him know if you've got the nine or eleven points. Now, here's some examples. This is west, this is east. You're west. North opens a heart. Does everybody agree with this double here? By east? He doesn't have a five card suit to bid. He's short in hearts. He has four spades. At least three cards in all unbid suits. It looks pretty pretty ideal to me. How many points does he have? No, he has seven, he has twelve. He has twelve high card points. South passes. This is a point here, yes. So, this is Queen 10-6, and this is Ace-King 9-2, that's 12 high card. Now it comes around to you, what are you going to bid? I hear one no trump, and I hear two clubs. How many say two clubs? I say two hearts. Not by any means. 
uh, I mean, look at this. You have no spade losers, no hard losers, two diamonds, and a club. We got game in spades. But not in clubs. No. Not in clubs. So it takes it takes too much to make five clubs. So if there's a chance that you might have four spades, and I realize it sounds like I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth, but when you have a choice, go for the major. Go for the major. All right. So the point here is, even though there was an intervening bid, you still need to jump a level if you have the requisite number of points. And this guy definitely does. All right, how about this hand? North bids a spade, east doubles, <coughs> south passes. What do you think about this hand right here? There are 11 high card points in it, right? Okay, here's the doubles. He doubled a spade, he has a six. There's an opening oh, hand. Oh, I thought that was the number four. No, that's not <laughs> that <was> easy. <laughs> he, had, he has a four <laughs> spade single. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. He has an opening hand. Well, he has 11 highs. That's close enough for government work, right? So, he, I would definitely double with that hand. I've got four cards support for all the unbid six. Yeah. Three cards? Three cards. Three cards. What's this hand worth? It's got 11 high card points in it. How many, how many hearts does East have? Five. No, East. East. He has at least three. He has at least three. How many do you have? Five. What do you, you have a fit? What do you get to add when you have a fit? Oh, yeah. Three there. Yeah. Support points. Yeah. How many points does this hand worth? 14. 13. 13. Yeah. 13. What are you going to bid? Four hearts. Four hearts. Just don't mess around. Just go. Yeah. She who knows goes. If you bid two hearts, is your partner going to bid again with that? No. Absolutely not. So don't bid two hearts when you know you have game. You're inviting partner to make a mistake when you do that. <coughs> Good partners help their partners not make mistakes. What would be, it would be an invitational bid. No, it's well, not an invitational bid. No, but I'm saying if you did, if you did three hearts instead of four. Yes, that, well, let's see. I would, I would probably make this the jack instead of the king right there and get three hearts what I do. Then I get three. Uh, okay. Now, how about this one? Last one. North opens a club. It's got a nice hand. Okay. Yes, it does. Sixteen high card points and he's short in clubs. As he's required to be. So he puts the red card down. His partner passes. What's West going to bid over here? One heart. One heart. Why can't he? Why doesn't he count his spade single? Do we have a fit yet? No. 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 That's why he doesn't count it. John, did you have questions? That's what I was going to say. Okay. Don't count singletons until you have a fit. If he's got the big double and he bids spades, is that singleton spade an asset? No. Not in your life. It's a liability. So he bids one heart. North gives up and he passes. This is the kind of hand that you need to raise when you have forced your partner to bid. You need a hand that's worth 17 or 18 points at a minimum. Don't get excited when partner bids a heart and you've got 11 or 12 points. It's not like you opened a heart and he bid two hearts. You forced him to bid and he may bid a heart with zero, one, or two points. So if you're going to raise, you need a hand that looks like this. It has lots of extras in it. In 
other words, it's about an intermediate grade hand. So it's 16. So, well, it, it, 17 or better. So he's, he's got a he's got shortness. Oh, shortness. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just we have know system. we have a heart now, right? Okay. Yeah. So he means two hearts and south passes. Now what does now what does West do? Does he pass that bid? He know he know how it would fit, so he can fit that. That's right. And he knows his partner has about how many points to raise him? Has about seventeen. And his hand now all of a sudden is worth eight. That's So what does he do? Does he pass? No. If you if you if you're uh, Republican, you get three cards. If you're a Democrat, you get four cards. Okay? <laughs> if you're conservative, you get three cards. <laughs> and, if, and if you're and if you're if you're not afraid of taking a chance, then then four. Your hand's worth eight points. You know your partner's hand is worth seventeen or eighteen at the very least because he raised. He says, "Good job. I have cards with you, and I have enough to give you just a little bump up." Just a little bubble. This is what it takes. So that is the only time he raises. Yes. If you have the common garden variety, just opening hand, take out double, generally the doubler will pass. But if you have a hand that looks like this one, give partner a little encouragement and see what he does. Now if he's sitting, if he's sitting way down here, he'll pass. And you'll still have a good chance to make it because of the strength of this hand. But it never hurts to try, right? It's only a game. Yeah, well, and, you know, I don't know about the rest of it, but I generally go off several times during a, a round when I'm playing. So it's not like it hasn't happened before, and it'll happen again. So we're going to, yes, Bob. So because he has so many points, if you get otherwise, he would just pass, pass. Yes. Yes. Now, I have a question on why that's I'm concerned about the good logic on that. I mean, West has the bid. West has six high card points. And he has the bid. And he has, now that he has oh, raised hand, his heart. I think that's too good. I'm mm -hmm. talking about regular hands. In a regular hand, he would pass, he would he pass would more heart. That means that West has the bid with a good hand on this side of the hand. That's not good. Some things can't be held. Can't finesse to that. Yeah. Well, but that, this is the way it usually goes in a takeout double situation. Okay. The stronger hand is often the one that's on the board because it's the dummy. That's just the nature of the beast with Michael's Q bids uh, and, and with uh, takeout doubles. The wrong hand is up down. But that, well, it may not be the wrong hand. A lot of times, this is the hand with the longer trumps, and so it's the master hand. So, yes, John. So you're giving shortness points on both sides. Yes. You can. That's they, right. Well, they have they have singletons in different suits, okay. so there's not a duplication. All right. And that's neither one of them counted those points until the other. The, uh, they, they established a fit, especially not this guy. Right. West knows that he's in short clothes, that right. he has a double at yeah. most. So, uh, you can you can invite that that's a pretty paltry eight points, but it's got an ace in it. And it's got four hearts, and your partner has promised you four hearts also. If he had five hearts, he'd have all called a heart, wouldn't he? So partner knows he has four hearts. Yes, Paul. That's really hard to make even three, isn't it? I don't think so. This is, look at this. This is the master hand. You have no spade losers. Right. You have no, no heart losers unless they break five up. And if you're that unlucky, take up another game. <laughs> this one, you have two diamond losers because you can <coughs> be able to rough one of these on the board, and by the time the fifth round comes around, your nine is, is probably going to, to provide you with a trick. So you've got two diamond losers. You have shortness on the board here with the clubs, too. You've got a good play for four. A good play. Does everybody see that? You don't necessarily want to trump with these high cards over here, but sometimes that happens. If you wanted to, you could reverse it and, and rough three.
three spades here and give up two diamonds and a club and, and make the bid. Sometimes you have to do what's known as dummy reversal and use the other hand as the dummy for trumping, since it has a lot of trumps in it. So, next week we're going to talk about, in this instance, Wes knew exactly where the hand needed to be played. Next week we're going to talk about what to do when you have a good hand like that and you don't have a clue where it ought to be played. That happens. That's where I live. Yeah, that happens, right? Okay. Well, a man and a woman were out to dinner at a fancy restaurant. Guess what made me think of that? Uh, and, and, and they um, were talking to the waiter, and they noticed, the man noticed, that he had a spoon in his pocket. And he says, what is with this? All you waiters and, and uh, busboys and everybody have spoons in your pockets. What's up with that? And the waiter says, well, the company that owns the restaurant hired this time management expert to come in and tell us how we could be more efficient. And they said that 74.8% of the time when somebody drops a utensil, it's the spoon. So if we carry a spoon with us, we'll save two hours per shift by not having to run back to the kitchen to get a spoon for people. And so that's going to make us a lot more efficient and, and make them more money. And the guy says, oh, well, that's interesting. Sure enough, during the meal, he drops his spoon. The waiter says, here, have mine. I'll get another one when I go back to the kitchen in a little while. After a bit, they got ready to go, and, and the man says, you know, I noticed that you have a string hanging there from your fly, and all the waiters do, too. What, what's with that? <laughs> and he says, well, you remember that, that time management company? <coughs> They decided that we were spending too much time in the back room. And that if we would have a string tied around the appropriate appendage, then when we went to the bathroom, we could just pull it and not have to, to wash our hands when we were finished. Oh. And that, that, will save, that will save two hours per shift. And the, and the man said,